Well, in today's show, we're going to talk about a new study that finds that using cell phones, tablets, and televisions at night can actually suppress melatonin, make you more alert, and decrease sleep quality. So if you're staring at this thing in your bed, keep watching because there's actually really good evidence to suggest that this is compromising your health. It's emitting more light and a greater uh, increased intensity of light that is compromising melatonin release and actually decreasing sleep quality. The title of this recently published study is Melanopic Irradiance Defines the Impact of Evening display light on sleep latency, melatonin, and alertness. And so this was a really interesting study involving 72 different subjects, and they track different devices with melanopic irradiance, and we'll talk about what that is, but that's a, a way to quantify light intensity. And what they found using dim light, using a smartphone, using a computer or a tablet, they found significant increase in alertness, uh, sleep latency. So you know, you hit, the, you hit the pillow, you're going to bed, you're trying to fall asleep, and you're sitting there ruminating, thinking about your to-do list, why can't I go to sleep. Oh my gosh, should I get up and go to the bathroom, whatever. That sleep latency uh, is increased. And so essentially your sleep quality is compromised and there's also a significant reduction in melatonin. So you can see here in figure A, what you see here is the different intensities are changing this sleep latency, which is problematic. So what you see here with the uh, intensity number one, which was just a light. And then you see intensity number two, which was, I believe, a tablet, uh, then a smartphone uh, and, and uh, television and so forth. And you can see how with the the increase intensity, there is an increase concomitantly or uh, proportionally with sleep latency. And they talk about how light at night is problematic. They say display light in the evening and night can cause undesirable non-image forming effects. It's, it increases alertness and influences sleep architecture. Furthermore, display light can suppress the production of the pineal hormone melatonin and may shift the endogenous circadian clock to a later time. This is the most important thing. And I, we're all guilty of this at some level. You know, if you're traveling, you want to set your alarm, you want to check in on your airline the night before, uh, text a friend, whatever. But we know when we do that, we don't sleep as well. But these phones are so addictive. I think it's really great to have a strategy where you just say, look, at this time, whether it's eight o'clock, 8.30, nine o'clock, you're putting your phone in a cabinet, shut in the cabinet, and that's it. That's done. Because it's very, it's really too tempting to just check in on stuff like needless things, emails, uh, bank account for whatever. And that is going to compromise your sleep. And this is where the magic happens with recovery, with circadian rhythm optimization, with aging and, and all of this. And so what the scientists found is that the usual levels experienced in the evening are relatively low compared to daylight. You know, for example, a tablet is going to have 80 lux. You know, daylight, you go outside in Southern California, you know, in, in the summer, you're going to get 5,000 lux. So it seems low intensity, but it's that the ability of these non-image forming light, uh, this so-called melanopic irradiation, uh, that is actually impacting all this super chismatic nucleus and so forth. We know that a smartphone is 40 lux. That's actually less than a television. This is what's interesting. People think, oh my gosh, don't watch TV. It's bad, but I'm on my phone. A TV is about four times less of the intensity of light compared to an iPhone. Still, it's smart to wear blue, blue light filtering glasses and the like, but these have uh, biologic effects. And again, so if you're struggling with weight loss, blood sugar health, food cravings, hormone imbalances, where you don't like how you're aging, you're seeing more wrinkles, more gray hair, more visceral fat, get the phones out of the bedroom. Stop using them in the 90 minutes before bed. In addition to the rods and cones that help create the colors and the visual effects, there's intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells in the retina uh, that also signal information about light coming through the photopigment melanopsin. And these encode information about the environment. And it turns out that these melanopsin-containing cells influence the circadian clock. And so that's where light intensity at night is really a problem. So we're going to really dive into this. But first, friends, I want to welcome you back. Thanks for hitting the like button. If you're enjoying this content, please share this video with it as a direct text message with a friend who's guilty of being on phones and tablets and screens before bed. It's really bad for your health. If you want to optimize your sleep and sleep quality, you might want to consider the My Relax and Calm by Myoscience. What's unique about this formula is it's a multi-ingredient synergistic restorative blend containing taurine, magnesium, potassium, L-glycine, also myo-inositol and theanine, a synergistic blend of nutrients that help improve a calm and facilitate a calm, relaxed mood and improve sleep quality. There's hundreds of reviews from real life customers just like you who are trying to sleep better at night and also support electrolyte balance, get added magnesium and glycine. L-theanine has been shown to be very helpful as well, uh, as well as the other nutrients in there. You can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. I will put links below. You can check out all the different
different reviews and what people are saying. We have recently updated this formula to add both potassium glycinate as well as L-glycine. L-glycine is a amino acid that has been shown to improve detoxification and sleep as well. So I'll put links in there and a coupon code using the code podcast. So let's get back and talk about light intensity and talk specifically about melanopsin. Okay, so this is independent of your rods and cones in your eye. This melanopsin is part of this intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells that translate light intensity to the circadian clock system in the brain, telling the brain whether it's daylight or night. So the intensity of the light affects this melanopsin. So melanopsin's enhanced sensitivity to shorter wavelength has led to the development of various strategies to reduce short wavelength light exposure from displays. So-called blue light blocking glasses help to protect evening light from induced melatonin suppression and attenuate the activating properties of evening light. Furthermore, various software-based methods are used to manipulate light intensity settings and making them dimmer and shifting the color balance to a more yellow set point by reducing short wavelength content. Both filters and coloring shifting software additionally modify brightness and color and have improved effects on sleep. And so here is the image that you need to take a screenshot of. What you have in intensity one is just natural, uh, you know, just the ambient light uh, at night, you know, from, from darkness. And then you have intensity two, which is a cell phone. You have intensity three, which is a tablet. Intensity four, which is a computer. The computer is the worst. Look at what it is doing uh, to the, uh, the wavelengths and the intensity. And it is negatively impacting sleep quality. So again, when thinking about order of what is the most benign to the least benign, the most benign is going to be a cell phone. And what you can do is change in your settings. I have on my uh, a shortcut. So if I click it three times, it goes to this orange setting. And this is what I use at night. If I have to be on the phone to check into a flight or to call someone or text someone or check in on someone, whatever it may be, uh, you just hit this accessibility feature three times and I'll change it right back. There you go. So that very easy shortcut. I'll link a tutorial about how to do that. This is literally life-saving because just think about the cumulative effect of sleep deprivation and, and compromised sleep quality on recovery, on melatonin, on all of the growth hormone. Uh, it's very important. It's not just that, it's not about one night. It's about all of the nights that you're sleeping. You should be getting deep sleep every single night, but the computer is just bad news bear. A, a, a monitor, uh, you can see here, the intensity here is almost triple what it is from a cell phone. So that's going to be the most suppressive on melatonin and sleep quality. So this uh, figure here shows uh, how display light impacted melatonin. And you can certainly see that in the figure C, which is below here, you see melatonin release in terms of the light intensity. So intensity one was just ambient uh, nightlight. Uh, intensity two was the cell phone. And then intensity three, of course, was the uh, tablet. And then intensity four is a computer. So a cell phone has a, a pretty significant impact on melatonin suppression. As you can see here, uh, comparing intensity one to intensity two, it's nearly twofold difference in terms of the uh, suppression of melatonin release. And I think a lot of people are not aware of that. And I think that is important to recognize. So so it's also very important to recognize that children are more sensitive to the light-induced suppression of melatonin and sleep latency compared to adults. I want to just read to you what the scientists say. Children and adolescents show a high light sensitivity and increased melatonin suppression even at low light levels. According to Higuchi et al., the percentage of melatonin suppression by light was almost twice as high in children compared to adults. Thus, the potential role of metameric light to protect children and adolescents from unwanted near-infrared effects in the evening warrants investigation. And so it turns out that you should not be giving your children cell phones or access to tablets or computer screens before bed because of the shape of their eyes and it's even more problematic and harmful for them. And uh, really, really important. So in closing, I want to just share with you this article here. We did a full deep dive on this last fall. The title of this paper here is Recommendations for Daytime, Evening, and Nighttime Indoor Light Exposure to Best Support Physiology, Sleep, and Wakefulness in Healthy Adults. And in that video that I will link below and in the show notes, we talked about investing in an at-home light meter. Really important. I think a lot of people are unaware about how the light pollution in their interior part of their home or even in their car or streetlights or whatever where they do evening walks can suppress melatonin. So it's important to get familiar with okay, what does 50 lux of light look like? What does 20 lux of light look like? And essentially what they found in that paper is during the daytime, we want to be exposed to as much light intensity as possible. Even on a cloudy day, you go outside and take a walk, you're talking about 2000 lux. You want to be exposed to that minimum 500 lux during the noon part of the day, minimum on a, on a really cloudy, rainy day. Uh, and if you live in Alaska or Siberia or, or whatnot, you can invest in other lights to help improve that. Now, in the uh, two hours before bed, you want to keep it under 50 lux. 
and then in the hour before bed under 20 lux, and then while sleeping near near zero as possible. So as minimal uh, light coming in your room, blackout curtains, no, no devices in the room, no smartwatches pinging at you. You want to minimize the light exposure around when you're sleeping. And so that's really important to recognize as well. Uh, some people sleep with the TV on, not a good thing. Remember the TV is putting out at least 40 lux. Uh, if you have the iPhone, if you're reading on your smartphone before you go to bed, uh, you are suppressing melatonin and that's going to age you faster. That's going to cause you to have more food cravings during the daytime and probably augment uh, and change blood sugar regulation, which is not good. So this study is really important. I just wanted to highlight that. And uh, again, it's a simple habit. It's harder to implement because these devices are quite addictive, but you need to know that this is a cumulative effect. One night's not going to totally wreck you, but if you're doing this every night as a habit, 10, 20 years, your future self will be mad at you for doing that. I'm telling you right now. So it's better to just shift your habit, put these things in a drawer or a cabinet at eight o'clock at night, turn them off and just say, good night phone. We can, we'll check in in the morning. So that's what I would suggest. Uh, hopefully you found this information helpful. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing this with a friend who may benefit and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.